Welcome to Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum in Cheyenne. I'm Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian here at the museum. And since oh, about 2015, I've been going through the permanent collection of about 300 firearms that are owned by the museum and doing some research, recataloging, connecting the stories that are associated with some of these firearms. So today we have a really nice first generation Colt single action army in caliber 3840. It's kind of strange that the 3840 is actually a 40 caliber. So it maybe should have been called a 4040. But uh, the people who developed the cartridge and the firearms get to name them, so it's a 3840. And several Colt models of Colt revolvers were manufactured in cartridges that were also chambered in Winchester lever action firearms, first in the 1873 and later in the model 1892. So those rifles were chambered in 2520, 3220, 3840, and 4440. All of those are basically handgun cartridges, but they were chambered in those repeating rifles. So again, what a, what a beautiful example of a Colt single action army. You know the background, I'm sure, that the Colt single action army was adopted by the United States military in 1873 in caliber 45, and additional calibers, barrel length, and models were developed uh, subsequent to that adoption. So again, very, very nice handgun. Uh, you can see that it, the color case hardening on the frame and the hammer is still relatively bright. The bluing on the barrel and cylinder and back strap trigger guard is in excellent condition. And this has these really nice pearl grips on it, uh, which I think probably came from the factory. They have the Colt medallions. And at the time, you could order a Colt revolver with all sorts of, of additions. You had a choice of barrel lengths and grips and, and calibers. So I think this came from the factory with these really nice pearl grips, because at the time, the frame would be forged, then the grips fitted to that individual frame. So if you took the grips off one Colt revolver and tried to put it on another Colt revolver, it might not be a perfect fit, but this is a perfect fit on both sides. And I really like this uh, bull head that's on this side, and that's uh, obviously decorative and very attractive. But it also has a function in that if you're holding that revolver, that protrusion or high spot fits right in the palm of your hand, which gives you an excellent grip on the revolver. So this one has three file marks right here. And Legend has it that gunmen and lawmen in the Old West would notch the grips or mark their guns in some way to, for the number of people they killed. Well, uh, without any knowledge, it looks to me like all three marks were put there on the same time, which doesn't mean the guy couldn't have killed three people at the same time. So, what's the story behind this particular revolver? Well, we have a statement from the donor which says, this Colt six shooter, caliber 3840, was presented to John Owens by the Wyoming Cattlemen's Associations, Association for his efforts in wiping out cattle rustling in Wyoming in the late 1800s. John Owens was hired as a range detective, as was my father, E.C. Mullen. A short time later, Owens was sheriff of Weston County, and my father was his deputy at age 19. It was during these years that my father was presented with this gun by Mr. Owens. And again, <laughs> during these years, it would really be nice if people put dates on things. But we have to assume from this statement in the late 1800s, 
uh, so 1890s, Owens was a legitimate a sheriff. He was uh, the third elected sheriff in Weston County, served from 1890 through 1892 to 1899, was elected again in 1904, 1906, and 1908. He was a competent and well-liked sheriff, but he was also a gambler and owned a saloon and a dance hall, one called the House of Blazes. And there is also reference to some of those establishments owned by John Owens may have also been Bordellos. So anyway, John Owens, was this handgun his? Well, could have been. The Wyoming Cattlemen's Association is probably misnamed in this statement because it's the Wyoming Stock Growers Association. And I've contacted them on other occasions. They have no records of presenting firearms to people. So that is, was a dead end. But it seems like the timeline really doesn't match because this revolver was manufactured and left the factory in uh, 1916. And by that time, John Owens was in his 70s, living in Worland, Wyoming, working as a guard at the boys' school, the boys' reformatory there in Worland. So kind of timeline doesn't match. Uh, story may have been confused by the donor. I used to be kind of dismissive. Oh, you didn't get your story straight. And then I discovered that a lot of my family history is rife with inaccuracy, so I'm much more forgiving. But again, a beautiful Colt single action army. Story may not match the timeline, but it's still a nice gun. And John Owens was a real sheriff. So anyway, if you got comments, questions, put them in the section below. Or you can give me a call at the museum. I'm not here every day, but they take messages, and I would be glad to respond to your phone calls uh, when I am available to do so. Anyway, thanks for watching.